What's going on? Welcome to this Smart Hardwiring Kit installation video. In this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to install a Smart Hardwiring Kit for your dash cam so that you can make use of the parking monitor feature if your dash cam has it. What I have here is the Rexing V5 modular camera. As of the release of this video, this is a brand new camera. And like most cameras, it comes with a cigarette adapter plug. Now, I want this installation to be out of sight and out of mind. I want it to be permanent. But most importantly, I wanna make use of the parking monitor feature that the camera has. And by using this, I'm not gonna be able to do that. In order to have the parking monitor feature working in any dash cam, you usually have to install a smart hardwire kit. That way the camera knows when the car is off and when the car is on so it can turn on and off automatically and also so that the camera has the voltage that it needs when the car is off so the parking monitor works but the main reason you want to install a hardwire kit is so that if you go to work the camera doesn't just stay on all the time and then you have a drain battery and you can't start your car now while i have the rexing v5 dash cam this is the same process for all other rexing models and in fact most other manufacturers and even for generic universal kits in a nutshell the cable is meant to stay plugged into the camera and provide a power and then the circuitry will ensure that your camera's parking mode doesn't activate if your car's battery voltage drops below 11.8 volts for this to work right, we have to provide the camera a steady 12 volts of power on the yellow wire, a switch 12 volts of power, in other words, 12 volts that is only present when the car is on on the red wire and a solid chassis ground. So all of these wires are gonna end up at our fuse box. As you can see, I already have the hardwire kit routed to the fuse box. So if you wanna know how I got the kit all the way to the fuse box, I'll go over that after this part right here. And there are some critical things that you need to know. The yellow wire right here is always supposed to be powered. So what we have to do is find which one of these fuses or which one of these spots, because there are some that are empty, actually have 12 volts going to it all the time. There are some circuits in the car that are always supposed to have 12 volts. That way the functions can work even when the car is off. The door lock and unlock mechanism that needs power all the time so you can unlock your car. So we can expect that particular fuse in here to have 12 volts. Others, like this one right here, goes to your airbags. You don't want your airbags on when the car is off, so we can expect that fuse right there to not have 12 volts when the car is off. So we have to kind of dig in there and find the right two spots to plug these cables in. And of course, we have to find a good chassis ground for the black wire right here. So to do this, we're gonna need to use a multimeter. A multimeter like this one right here will allow you to take the readings that you need. I'll link to a multimeter in the video description. They're very cheap and they're easy to use. So for this particular test, we're gonna set our multimeter to read DC voltage, which is denoted by that symbol right there. So this is just your range. So I'm gonna set it to 20 volts right here because I don't expect to go over 12 to 14 volts because that's what I'm gonna be reading. We are gonna be testing some of these empty spots and we're also interested in knowing which one of the legs has power, the 12 volts, because the power is only gonna be present in one leg. So right here, you can see each fuse has two legs, the top leg and the bottom leg. And these empty spots right here, same thing. So when we're testing these spots right here, I need to be able to get my multimeter lead in there. You can remove these caps like this. However, this particular multimeter still does not fit in there. So what I'm gonna do is actually grab a paper clip and all I'm doing is wrapping the paper clip around the lead because the paper clip is much thinner than the lead and it'll fit in there. So the black lead is actually gonna go against any exposed metal. So this will work right here, that bolt will work. So I'm gonna hold it there. And then the red leads is actually gonna go inside where the fuse goes. So I'm just gonna go up and first I'm gonna test all of these spots that are empty. If I do get a hit, I'm also gonna note where the voltage is on the top or the bottom. So let me go ahead and get started here. Okay, I got nothing there, nothing there, nothing there, nothing there. So I know that all of those empty spots are not on when the car is off. So now I'm gonna go ahead and test all of the fuses that I'm interested in. If you notice, the kit is actually supplied with the blue 15 amp fuses. So I'm actually only interested in the 15 amp fuses right here. Do not put these on a fuse rated for a different amperage, okay? That's very important. Luckily, if you look right there, those little pieces of exposed metal right there are so that you can actually test the fuse without having to remove them. So that's what I'm gonna use to test the fuse. I'm gonna put this one back right now, and then I'm just gonna go down the line. There we go, we got one there, 12 volts there, nothing there, 12 volts there. These are airbags, nothing there there 12 volts 12 volts and 12 volts good 
So now we know all of the fuses that actually have 12 volts when the car is off and which don't. So for the yellow wire right here, we're actually gonna pick one of those spots that we just tested that has 12 volts all the time. So to figure out which one, we're gonna open up our owner's manual to see what all of these 15 amp fuses are doing. We're doing this because we don't wanna mess with an important circuit. You should stay away from your SRS circuit, which controls your airbags, or anything that has to do with transmission or engine control modules. Thankfully, there's usually quite a few safe choices. Good rule of thumb, pick something that won't disable your car if the fuse blows. I pick number 29 here, which is the fuse for the fog lights. So now that I've selected number 29 for my yellow wire, right here there is one more thing you need to know the fuse right here as you can see is actually at the end of the wire which means that i have to be mindful of the orientation of the fuse because the fuse can be installed this way or it can be installed that way if i actually want these cables protected by the fuse i need to orient it in a way that the power flows through the fuse element and onto the camera so before i go and plug it into spot 29 right there i want to find out where the power is coming from that way i can plug in the leg that is furthest away from the wire onto the spot that has the power so to do that all I'm going to do is remove the fuse from the spot that I'm interested in in my case number 29 right here and then I'm simply going to test the spot for power so I'm going to see which leg the top or the bottom the power is coming from so I'm going to start with the top okay I see nothing there and I'll go to the bottom there we go 12 volts are coming from the bottom so as I said I'm going to grab that fuse and orient it like this so that power flows through the fuse element and onto the cable so the next wire is going to be our red wire right here and we already tested all of these empty spots and we already know that none of them have power with the car off so what i'm going to do is turn the ignition switch on and if any of them come to life i know that i can use them for the red wire so again i'm going to grab my multimeter so let me start with this one right here next to the yellow wire there we have 12 volts on the top and nothing on the bottom i'm going to test the other ones just because this one is oriented like this so i kind of want to orient them both the same way so i actually want the power on the bottom let me test this one nothing up there and 12 volts on the bottom perfect so i'm going to use that spot right there and again because the power is on the bottom i'm going to orient it like this so now we just took care of both of those wires okay so the ground wire has to go to solid chassis ground thankfully usually there's a bolt right on the fuse box somewhere close by that you can tap into even though this is plastic right here the bolts actually going through the plastic and onto metal so this bolt right here will do just fine so i'm going to use that one there so now all of our cables are getting the power or the ground that they need our yellow wire is getting a steady 12 volts that is always present this is the cable right here the wire that's going to make your parking mode work because if you didn't have that cable plugged into a constant source whenever your camera goes into parking mode it wouldn't have the power that it needs to power on the other hand the red wire is going to allow the camera to turn on and off with your car so these are all the cables that we need for this right here to work however there is an issue that i think you really should know about so after driving around for a couple of weeks after installing the hardwire kit i discovered that about 40 percent of the time the camera actually wouldn't start on its own it would actually flash a little bit and it would shut right down i also noticed that when i turned the ignition on the accessory position that the camera would turn on every time so i knew that the hardwire kit was installed properly but why was it shutting down on me whenever I would start the car? So what I did was I built this little rig right here and this is gonna allow me to plug in the power cable for the camera right here so that I can take some readings right here. And then I'm gonna start the car and I'll show you what's happening so that if this happens to you, you know what to do about it. So I have my multimeter set up right here. I have the negative lead going to ground. I'm gonna plug in the hard wiring kit cable right here to my testing rig. I have two leads because the car is off right now, one of them should show five volts because the hard wiring kit is actually a converter, so it converts the 12 volts into five. So one of them should show five volts and the other one should show zero volts. So let me go ahead and test that so you can see. There we go, five volts and we got nothing. Okay, so when I turn on the car or put the switch on the accessory position, I should see five volts come up here. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. I'll leave that right there and I'm gonna push the button. There we go. So now that zero turns into five. So now that the accessory switch is on the on position, I should see five volts there, which I do, and five volts there, okay? This wire right here, it's the one that's constantly supposed to be on. So I'm gonna leave the lead right there, and I'm actually gonna turn on the car. I want you to really pay attention to the voltage right here when I do that. I'm gonna do it one more time. I'm gonna turn on the car right now.
So as you notice, there was a considerable drop in voltage. Now I've done this test quite a few times. It dropped to about three volts there, but sometimes it drops to as low as two volts and maybe even one point some volts. So that little drop in voltage right there is enough to sometimes glitch out the camera if the voltage is low enough and the camera tries to turn on, but then it detects that the voltage is too low and it shuts down. And that's why it's not very consistent because the battery voltages fluctuate throughout the day, depending on the temperature, depending on the load that the car has had. So that's one of the reasons why this is happening, not just with this kit right here, but with other kits and other manufacturers. So a couple of things I wanna mention about this, in no way does this affect parking mode. When you're parked, there's no fluctuation in voltage. So parking mode works perfectly. So the hardware kit is doing doing its job and you don't have to worry about parking mode not working. Another thing is that this is probably gonna be a problem more prevalent in the winter than in the summertime because in the winter time, the batteries tend to be weaker. So I would suspect, although I haven't experienced the winter yet with this camera and this kit installed, I would suspect that in the winter, I'm probably gonna have more of an issue with this. This camera is brand new and this is a very easy fix via a firmware update. All they have to do is put a delay in the camera and that'll solve the problem. So I suspect it's gonna be fixed pretty quickly, but whether you have this camera or a different camera from a different manufacturer altogether and this is happening to you, now you know why and usually a firmware update will do the trick. The first step in installing your dash cam is finding the location where your dash cam will attach. A good spot is usually right behind the rear view mirror right here. Not only is the dash cam not a distraction to the driver there because it's not visible, but it's roughly centered and the glass in front of it gets cleaned by the wiper during inclement weather. So once you get the camera attached, plug the power cable in. Since my rear view mirror is auto dimming, I have this convenient cable tray right here that I will make use of and it makes it look professional. So I'm simply routing the cable in there and then tucking the excess along the headliner all the way to the pillar like you see right here. As you can see, I have the trim panel on the pillar removed. Some cars like this WRX STI have these side curtain airbags along the pillars. So you don't just wanna tuck the cable along willy nilly. We're gonna secure the cable properly behind this pillar. So let me show you how to remove it because it can be tricky. Popping the trim out is easy enough. Get your fingers just under it and then pull it out. Now, don't force it too much because it's only gonna come out about an inch. That's a safety feature in case the airbags deploy so this piece doesn't just go flying. This special yellow retaining clip is holding it in place. To get this out, stick your fingers behind the trim and rotate that clip 90 degrees and that'll release it. You can see right here why that needs to be rotated. Now just use a simple panel removal tool and pop the tweeter cover out and move it out of the way. Then you can angle the trim piece and get it out completely. When you reinstall this piece, and this is important, make certain that you rotate that yellow retainer back 90 degrees. So now we can get to securing the camera cable. These existing factory cables are perfect to attach our cable to. Simple zip ties do a fine job. Notice here I'm bundling up an extra length of cable in a loop. This is called a service loop. And if at any point in the future I wanted to move my camera for whatever reason, I can simply use cable from this slack right here instead of undoing the whole installation. So the rest is fairly simple. Every few inches, secure the cable with a zip tie and then trim them when done. To get to the fuse box, we have to run the cable through this gap right here, and there isn't enough room to put a camera in there and clearly show you. To make this easier, you can do two things. First, wrap the individual wire ends together so that there is less of a chance of them getting caught on something, and it might help to flash a light from underneath to better see the paths that your cable can take. I've done this a few times and it can be challenging, but definitely doable. The fuse box in this car is just behind this panel right here. So grab a panel removal tool and get behind this piece right here and just pop it out. That's gonna reveal a Phillips screw that we also have to remove. Then on the front, we're gonna pull on the panel using both hands like you see me doing. It's just clipped. Now, don't pull too hard because we still have to unplug these three connectors back here. And once you do, set the piece aside and now you'll have all the room that you need to work on the fuse box. 
Now make sure that you take a few minutes to do some cable management. You can see right here that I just used existing cables and zip ties to neatly secure the hard wiring kit. You don't want these cables rattling in there and we want this to look professional. Here's a better view of where the cables will end up. There's no perfect way to do this. The space in here is dark and crowded. Just do your best to secure the cable with zip ties along the way. And that's it. With everything installed, we can go right into the camera menu and turn on the parking monitor feature. Make sure you check out my full review of this camera. This is the Rexing V5 modular camera. It's a very practical camera that checks a lot of boxes. I'll link this wiring kit and that dash cam in the video description. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you got something out of this video. And if you did, please give it a like and consider subscribing for more content like this. I'll see you next video. Take care.